Welcome to Test 2 Plus, everybody. I am Trace. We are trying to get to the bottom of sleep this week. This is a show where we take big, complicated topics, we try and make them feel less complicated, and there is only one question left to ask this week, and that is, what is the future of sleep? You know, where are we gonna go with sleep in the future? Well, the future of sleep has always been talked about as like, you're gonna learn in your sleep. That was something that was popular when I was a kid. You play a tape while you're asleep and you will learn the things on that tape, right? We've all heard of this before. You can learn foreign languages in your sleep. Just play that and you'll learn and your brain will pick them up. Sorry to say that's not entirely true. Your brain isn't actually conscious while you're asleep. Remember, it's a different brain from the brain you're awake with. But that being said, it can consolidate memory. So when you do that, learning during the day and then playing, say, a foreign language tape at night, learning that foreign language during the day, you will do better in that foreign language, but it can't teach you the foreign language while you're asleep. You have to already have learned that stuff. This is just gonna help reinforce it. They did this test where they gave people a 90-minute nap after they practiced learning a simple tune on like a, I don't know if it was on a keyboard or some musical instrument, whatever it was, but it was played while they slept. And if that was played to them while they slept after they learned it before the nap, they could play it 4% more often than if the melody was not played while they slept. That's in Nature Neuroscience. 4% doesn't sound like a huge amount, because it's not, but 4% is better than 0%, so if all you want to do is learn a foreign language, then get a foreign language tape and maybe find a way to play it to yourself when you sleep. It will help you learn better, but it won't let you learn for you. Verbal cues presented during non-REM sleep, this is a study in cerebral cortex, found that foreign vocabulary could be recalled better and was able to be learned without impairing the, what they called consolidation process or the memory consolidation process while they sleep. They actually monitored people's brains and found that they weren't messing up the process of sleeping by doing so. So you can still sleep and learn sort of at the same time, but you kind of have to pre-learn first. Science fiction wants us to have cryo sleep, hyper sleep. I would love this. I want some cryo sleep. Go to another planet or you know another galaxy. Cryo sleep is the best. It's not, it's not gonna work. Guys. They've done experimental work with cryosleep and hypersleep for a long time. Um, they study it to try and find out if we can put humans into what would essentially be a hibernative state, which, if you were paying attention earlier, is a completely different physiology than sleep. When you think of it as a sleeping setup, that's not really how it works. So unfortunately, we can't go into cryosleep with current knowledge or hypersleep. But the closest thing we have is called therapeutic hypothermia. Therapeutic hypothermia you've probably heard about. It's when you know a kid falls through the ice in a lake and then an hour later is fished out and is fine, has no brain damage. That is crazy, but possible to induce in a medical setting. It's called induced hypothermia, and that is usually used to avoid heart attacks, to avoid brain damage, and to slow the body processes down and give more time to find a way to save the person. It's not for sleep, but to prevent dying. That's the closest we've got to cryo-sleeping. What happens is they cool down the core parts of the body, and that cooling, they also pump in a chemical into your blood vessels that cools the entire body equally, and then once it's cooled, all of your cells move more slowly. The longest known person to survive hypothermia being induced in medicine was in Sweden. It was a person who was known to have been in induced hypothermia for 40 minutes. They actually had a skiing accident that lowered their body temperature significantly. They asphyxiated and they were in the ice for 40 minutes and then in, kept in hypothermia for another 40 minutes until they were rewarmed. Pretty incredible stuff, actually. To put people into an easily reversible induced hypothermic sleep, like say in a science fiction situation, like on the Nostromo or something, that's nothing that we can do now. There may be something in the future when we learn more about sleep, since obviously we don't know that much about it, but inducing a coma, sedation, all of those things, those are not actually sleep. So you can't just put somebody in a coma, send them to another star and have them wake up and be okay. They weren't sleeping during that time. People age normally also, which would be bad. People age normally during sleep. Something else that from science fiction that I would love in the future of sleep is dreams. Dreams are fascinating from a scientific perspective. They're completely subjective experience. 
There's no way for you to experience my dream. I can only describe it to you. And I can't remember my dreams particularly easily either to, for, on a personal level. Some people have very vivid, very easily remembered dreams. I don't. Which brings me to recording those dreams. Wouldn't that be amazing if we could record our dreams? I mean, the problem is we can't read your mind. So we don't know what's going on in there. We know there's activity. The eyes are moving. The brain is active. But all we can do is reconstruct images based on trained images. Computers don't understand how the brain works yet. So we can scan a brain with a functional magnetic resonance imager. It tells where the blood is flowing in your brain. Then it can reconstruct images based on things that it's seen you look at also in an fMRI machine. So if I show you a picture of a lemon while you're sitting in an fMRI and it scans where your blood flows when you see that lemon, if you dream about a lemon, maybe your blood would flow in that same way. That's the best we got. Two years ago, scientists in Japan reconstructed images from brain scans of dreaming people. And they turned them into short films, which you can find online. It's really, really amazing. They used an fMRI, and they made predictions using a learning algorithm. So your brain can't really be plugged into a computer, but as long as we're training the computer to know what you're looking at, then it can sort of pick it up. The problem with the future of sleep is that all we're trying to do in the future of sleep is get rid of it instead of embrace it. We kind of look down on sleep. Sleep was thought of as something that people did when they couldn't stay awake. It was almost like a weakness. But in real life, in reality, and scientifically, hopefully that you now know, sleep is extremely important to having a healthy and balanced life. Plus, it's amazing. It feels so great to sleep. So hopefully after this, you now understand sleep a lot more. I know I do after researching all of this, and I've been covering it for a long time on DNews. And still, I found that I was learning new things just putting this together, because sleep is one of those things that is a universal tie-in. Everybody has to do it, and yet we all sort of ignore it or pretend like it's something we can live without. I hope this video series gets you thinking about sleep as much as I have, because if not, there are four more videos all about sleep waiting for you right here so you can check them out and as always please subscribe and we will see you next week thanks for watching